Hello, this is your discussion on cardiac dysrhythmia. So dysrhythmia is any disorder of the formation or conduction or both of the electrical impulses within the heart. So the concern here is electrical impulse. So it causes disturbance or irregularity in the electrical system of our heart. The common initial evidence, the hemodynamic effect they cause. So when I say hemodynamic effect, this could be the changes in the pulse rate and the blood pressure of your patients brought about by the problems in the electrical conduction of the heart. So oftentimes, patients would report to the ER with palpitations and hypotension. And then from that, we will be able to identify if there are presence of arrhythmias. So not all of the arrhythmias would result to chest pain. Okay, it is not unlike your angina and your myocardial infarction wherein there will be chest pain. The diagnostic test for this one is your ECG. So, uh, the site of arrhythmia or dysrhythmia is uh, named according to the site of origin and then the mechanism of formation or conduction. So, if you can recall our cardiac conduction system, it starts with your SA node followed by your AV node that goes towards your bundle of His and then your Purkinje fibers. So if you can recall, the normal pacemaker of the heart is your SA node with a rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute. And then you have your AV node with a lower firing rate. So the conduction system of the heart has the following components. So you have your P wave, your QRS complex, and then your T wave. Okay, so this one or these three represents atrial depolarization, ventricular depolarization, and then ventricular repolarization. Now, there is what we call the sinus rhythm. When I say sinus rhythm, it means that the electrical impulses has originated from your SA node. This way it's referred to as sinus rhythm, okay, to refer to your SA node. Now, when I say NSR, your NSR is your normal sinus rhythm. Your normal sinus rhythm or your normal ECG has the following characteristics. One, the rate should be 60 to 100. Below that, it's bradycardia. Above that, it's tachycardia. There should be regular rhythm. So, in your ECG, the regular rhythm could be seen by the same distance okay, or constant distance between the two QRS complexes. Okay, so meaning between the two QRS complexes, there should be the same distance for the entire strip for us to say that the rhythm is regular. Okay, P wave is normal and consistent in shape. The PR wave is expected to be at 0 0.12 to 0 0.20 seconds. And then the PQRS ratio is 1 is to 1. That means that in every P wave, there is a QRS that follows. Okay, with that, you can say it is a normal sinus rhythm. So this is an illustration of your normal sinus rhythm. Now, pathophysiology. In your dysrhythmia, there could be a lot of causes, and the causes could be hypoxia or the decrease of oxygen, any electrolyte imbalance, especially your potassium followed by your calcium, and then you can have your acidosis and then diseases of myocardium. So diseases of myocardium could be your myocarditis, it could be your mitral valve prolapse, and any other diseases. Okay, now... Because with these causes, there is a change in the electrical stimulation. And because of this, alteration in myocardial tissue, automaticity, regularity, and excitability occurs. Because of that, hemodynamic alteration happens. So, whenever there is a problem on automaticity, regularity, and excitability, the firing of the electrical impulses throughout our heart is impaired. With that firing being impaired, the hemodynamics of our patient is being altered. So again, hemodynamics, that would include your blood pressure, your pulse rate, and even the pressure within your chest cavity. Okay, Because of that, there will be changes in contraction. The contractions of the heart tends to become less effective hence leading to decreased perfusion towards your vital organs. And with that, the complications. Let's talk about the dysrhythmias originating in the SA node. There are three dysrhythmias here that we want to focus on. Your sinus bradycardia, sinus tachycardia, and sinus arrest. Let's talk about your sinus bradycardia. Sinus bradycardia, the main thing that you need to remember is that this is sinus rhythm, meaning it originates from your SA node. And then bradycardia, meaning the problem is that it's slower than the normal. So if you would look at the ECG tracing on the slide, it would show that uh, it would show the relationship between the distance of the QRS complex and then the possible heart rate of your patient. Okay, in this case, if you can notice, 
if the distance between the QRS complex is um, wider, it would mean that the heart rate of the patient is lower. Okay, if you would look at this, it says that there are six large blocks. So if you would count the number of uh, blocks between your QRS complexes here, okay, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, the distance between the two QRS complexes is uh, six large blocks. That is commensurate to a heartbeat of 50 beats per minute. So again, your problem in sinus bradycardia is that the heart rate is slow. That's why it's referred to as bradycardia. Causes. There are different causes for this one. Lower metabolic rates. So meaning if the patient is sleeping, if the patient is an athlete on training, and then if the patient has hypothyroidism, there is a decrease on the metabolic rate, hence leading towards the decrease of your heart rate. Next is vagal stimulation. When I say vagal stimulation, think of your vagus nerve as your parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, so if there is parasympathetic or aggravated parasympathetic response, vomiting would occur. Okay, if you're doing suctioning, for example, or if there is severe pain and bearing down during defecation, it activates your valsalva maneuver. Hence, it decreases the heart rate of your patient. Then you can have the medications such as your calcium channel blocker, your amiodarone, and then your beta blockers. These medications are also known to cause sinus bradycardia. Hence, if your patient is taking any of this medication and then your patient experience any side effect or like your sinus bradycardia, you need to inform the physician to possibly discontinue the medication. Then you have your increase of intracranial pressure. So the increase of intracranial pressure has shown to cause your um, sinus bradycardia. Then you have your CAD or coronary artery disease. Okay, as I have mentioned, your coronary artery disease could be a sudden blockage in your blood vessel. Hence, it would lead to ischemia, then you will have injury, then you will have infarction. Then hypothermia. Hyperthermia could also cause a decrease in your heart rate, so as your acidosis. So characteristics, all the characteristics of your normal sinus rhythm are the same as the characteristics of your sinus bradycardia, except except that the heart rate is less than 60 BPM for your sinus bradycardia. Okay, manifestations, there is no specific symptoms for this patient. They may be asymptomatic at times, except if, okay, except if the patient is manifesting signs and symptoms of very slow heart rate. Okay, that is where your patient will start to have manifestations of decreased cardiac output. Okay, examples of that are your decreased level of consciousness, your syncope or your fainting, hypotension, lightheadedness, and easy fatigability. So again, the signs and symptoms only start to occur once the heart rate is very low. Management for sinus bradycardia would include okay, halting your Valsalva maneuver. So your Valsalva maneuver is considered to be a parasympathetic response, hence it would aggravate the bradycardia. So to address your Valsalva maneuver, you need to stop bearing down. So to stop that, you may want to increase the fiber on the diet or to administer stool softeners. Because if your patient is bearing down during defecation, your Valsalva maneuver would be um, activated. Then you need to place medications on hold such as your calcium channel blockers, your amiodarone, and then your beta blockers. Then we administer your atropine 0.5 milligram. It may be given as an IV bolus and repeated every three to five minutes for a maximum of three milligrams. Now, so your atropine is given if bradycardia would produce signs and symptoms of clinical instability. So again, clinical instability, such as your alteration already in mental status, hypotension, and chest discomfort. Okay, so take note, your atropine is a sympathetic drug, sympathetic medication. Then you'll be doing your emergency transcutaneous pacing if the bradycardia is unresponsive still to atropine, and then administration of your catecholamine, such as your epinephrine and dopamine, okay, which can increase the heart rate of our patient. The next sinus rhythm that we'll be talking about is your sinus tachycardia. As the term implies tachycardia, meaning there is increase in the heart rate. Okay, so causes of this are stress, excitement, it could be your pulmonary embolism or even your cardiogenic shock. Okay, as a compensatory mechanism for your shock, there will be tachycardia. So other causes, there is CNS stimulation or SNS stimulation. 
Okay? If your sympathetic nervous system is stimulated, there will be tachycardia. Use of stimulants. So stimulants here, as an example, would include your drugs. Okay? Would include drugs, caffeine, alcohol, and even your nicotine. Okay? The use of your illicit drugs and then excessive SNS stimulation, but reduced parasympathetic functioning. Okay, if there is an enhanced automaticity of your SA node with reduced parasympathetic tone, you refer to that one as inappropriate sinus tachycardia. Then in your autonomic dysfunction, there is what we call POTS. So your POTS is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. So what happens is that tachycardia of more than 30 from normal okay, would occur without hypotension when the patient is moving to a standing position. Okay, so when the patient moved to a standing position without the presence of, okay, or without hypotension, but there is tachycardia, you refer to it as POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Characteristic finding for this uh, abnormality is that the heart rate is greater than 100 beats per minute. However, it's less than 120 beats per minute. Also, the P wave tends to be normal and consistent in shape. It is always preceding your QRS, but it may be buried through your T wave. Okay, all aspects of sinus tachycardia take note is the same as that of the normal sinus rhythm, except for the rate. So let's have the following manifestations. There could be reduced cardiac output due to decrease in diastolic feeling time because of tachycardia or too much or too fast contraction of your ventricles. The tendency is that the ventricles are not fully filled before it contracts, hence leading towards reduced cardiac output. Then you have your mild dyspnea okay, or shortness of breathing, then complaints of palpitations or the patient may sometimes say, my heart is racing and then syncope or dizziness. So your syncope and dizziness is also related to reduced cerebral tissue perfusion. Treatment options for a patient with sinus tachycardia. Of course, you would want to lower down the heart rate of the patient. Drug options are giving your antihypertensive, such as your beta blocker, and then your calcium channel blockers. So they can reduce the heart rate quickly. Next, you can give your adenosine. Your adenosine is a parasympathetic stimulator which would slow down your heart rate. Then, this one is indicated if QRS is uniform in shape and ventricular rhythm is regular. Then, you have your procainamide. Your procainamide is uh, anesthetic. Your amiodarone and sotalol are given for wide QRS tachycardia. Then we have the synchronized cardioversion. So when we say synchronized cardioversion, it is the treatment of choice if tachycardia is persistent despite the medications given, hence leading towards hemodynamic instability. So once there is hemodynamic instability, we would want to appraise the patient to have synchronized cardioversion. In synchronized cardioversion, a low energy shock is given. It's referred to as synchronized because this is synchronized with the peak of your QRS complex. So meaning uh, the shock is given or that low energy shock is given at the peak of your QRS complex. For example, on the slide shown, um, you can see the yellow marks and that is where the cardioversion is usually given. Okay, so this is considered to be an elective procedure. As an elective procedure, you would need the consent of your patient. Nursing responsibilities is that prior to the procedure, you need to ensure that the laboratories are already taken. That is, if your patient would have troponin I, cardiac biomarkers, ECG is expected to be done before, during, and after the procedure. Then you have the equipment. You need to make sure that you have the defibrillator, which is capable of doing your synchronized cardioversion. Modern defibrillators at present are already capable of doing your synchronized cardioversion. Then you need to evaluate your patient after the therapy if uh, the desired effects were attained. And then you need to check for complications. One common complication for your synchronized cardioversion is the thromboembolism secondary to atrial fibrillation. For that reason, you need to check for the loss of atrial contraction during atrial fibrillation that causes the blood to pull to the atria. Okay, because of this pooling of blood, it leads to thromboembolism. That's why some patients are advised to take anticoagulants before they have the elective cardioversion. 
So the attempt of your elective cardioversion is is as if to restart the heart, to throw a shock to the heart for the heart's rhythm to normalize again. Then other procedures that you can have is your vagal maneuvers. One example is your carotid sinus massage or your carotid massage. So in this type of procedure, although performed commonly by the physician while the patient is on cardiac monitor, for this procedure, a compression or the, your carotid artery will be compressed in such a way that the baroreceptors will be elicited. Once baroreceptors will be triggered, it can cause decrease of your um, sympathetic nervous stimulation, hence leading towards a decrease of your heart rate. Then another is uh, by eliciting your Valsalva maneuver. So your Valsalva maneuver could be done by force exhalation against your closed glottis. Or oftentimes when we are bearing down during defecation. It's the best example of your Valsalva maneuver. So with this maneuver, it increases your intrathoracic pressure and your vagal tone. And hence slowing your heart rate. Other therapy would include applying a cold stimulus. Some would say you need to immerse your face to ice water to stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system. Then we have your sinus arrest. Sinus arrest is also known as sinus pause, sinus block. Basically, it's arrest, block, or pause because the SA node stopped firing for a little while. Causes could be cardiovascular disease, parasympathetic stimulation, or your vagal tone increase, infection, and then drugs such as your digitalis, quinidine, and salicylates. So the most common type is your junctional escape beat. So what happens? Clinical features would depend on the length of the arrest and may produce symptoms if very short duration. Can okay, we produce symptoms if of short duration? Now, the signs and symptoms are related also to decreased cardiac output. What happens is that, as shown on the slide, the P wave is missing. Okay, there is missing P wave here. The QRS and T wave may be normal. However, there will be a time that there is a prolonged pause, meaning there is no heart rate that is occurring. There is no P wave that started your SA node from firing. Then medical management, if episodes are transient and asymptomatic, you just need to monitor your patient. However, if it tends to be symptomatic, you can give your atropine. If episodes are prolonged for greater than three seconds, your patient might need temporary or permanent pacing. Okay, so you have your pacing procedures. That will be the end of the discussion on sinus dysrhythmias. Thank you.